Welcome back to part six of building a rage bringer. When we wrapped up last week, we had the wood core for the grip fit. And this week we're going to start shaping it. And I thought we would wrap it in leather, which would basically finish the dagger, but it didn't work out. It was not catastrophic. It did not go well. It, um, how about I just show you? We have the wooden core fitting snugly on the handle now. The next step is to rough the outside of it into shape. We'll do that at the belt grinder with a 120 grit belt. I'm going to do that by holding the two halves of the grip onto the dagger. And that is just so I can also take them off and sand them individually if I need to. Once that's roughly shaped, we'll use a two-part epoxy applied to the inside of both of those grip pieces to secure those wooden slabs onto the tang of the dagger. Once this epoxy has set up, We'll move on to using rasps, chisels, and sandpaper to get this into the final shape. The shape we're aiming for is basically a mirror image of the geometry of the blade. So at the cross guard end of the grip, there will be a chevron shape that meets at a peak, and that peak will carry on all the way up through the pommel. The wooden core will be wrapped in cord, hide glue, and leather. So we need it to be slightly smaller than the mating faces of the pommel and the cross guard. In this case, I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch step down as you move from the bronze to the wooden core. That eighth of an inch will be filled in by the leather and the cord of the grip. Here you can see the triangular plunge line shape in the blade mirrored in the wooden grip. Next up is getting that leather onto the grip. I screwed up. It looks like garbage, but I will go over what went wrong. And then of course we're going to redo it. The leather shrank a little bit. So it pulled back from the bronze, exposing the wood underneath. The edges are also very rough and the cord wrap that I put over it, I tied it in knots to secure it. And those knots left little dimples. And frankly, it looks like garbage. So I got to do something about it. Fortunately, we used epoxy to secure the wood to the blade, which is permanent. And we used hide glue to secure the leather and cord to the grip. Hide glue is reversible. You soak in a little water and a little heat and it will actually melt right off. So I've made some vertical slits in the leather to get some water in there just a little bit. I don't want to saturate the wood and then I apply a torch to heat that glue up and the old wrap just peels right off. I'm then using a rasp to clean up some of that leftover glue. 
The hide glue we're using is very similar to a gelatin. It comes in small beads or flakes and you hydrate that in water and it takes on a kind of rubbery consistency. You then heat up those hydrated beads in a glue pot. In our case, I'm using a waxing pot that would be used at a salon and it actually worked beautifully. Here I'm adding just a little bit more water to get that syrupy consistency I want. This time around I'm going to be doing a cord wrap underneath the leather. So I'm just gluing down the end of it here with that hide glue. And then you just wrap around, keeping tension on it the whole time, and pushing the string towards one end so there's no gaps. I want to avoid knots this time. So the north end is being held down by the string that's wrapped over it, but the south end is a little more complicated to secure. So I'm doing a trick here. You take a small piece of spare string, you fold it into a loop, and then you wrap your cord over it. Once you get to the end, you'll have a small loop peeking out from underneath your wrap, and you take your loose end of your wrap, you slide it through that loop, and then the other end of the loop, you grab that and you pull it, and it will tuck your string underneath your wrap so that it's identical to the other end. The only tricky part of this is you can pull both sides of the string in, the attached side and the loose side. So you can see here I use my thumb to keep a little pressure on the attached side of the string and that'll make sure the loose end is what pulls in. You then just cut it flush and kind of work your wrap back and forth and the loose end will actually tuck under the wrap and disappear. The whole wrap then gets a coating of hide glue to secure it all together. I then use some additional cord to build up ridges on the grip. This cord is identical except for the color. These ridges will show through in the final leather wrap as bands. That helps with the grip and it also just looks nice. Well, that will about do it for this week. I, um, I waffled on whether or not to show me screwing up and, and well, clearly I decided to include it. My reasoning was that this is YouTube. It's not Instagram. This is not meant to look perfect. It's not meant to 100% work out. It's a learning process for me and I'm hoping for you. And sometimes when you do that, you fail. That obviously is at the cost of brevity. And someone has already mentioned that this could have just been a five minute video showing off the highlights and maybe the final product. And they're not wrong, it could be. It isn't, but it could be. And the reason for that is with a few exceptions, a few expensive tools like the mill, and I just got a new lathe, most of this is doable at home. Actually, all of it, 100% of this is doable at home with basic hand tools, files, maybe a drill, some sandpaper, and I wanted to show how to do that. That said, the commenter's point is valid, so when all this is wrapped up, I'm going to edit together a full build video. I don't usually watch that sort of thing, so I don't know exactly what form it'll take, but that's the plan. And um, yeah. Anyways, uh, enough talking. If you enjoyed this, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified when I post the next video, which almost certainly will be the final build. See you then.